Good morning, Lehigh. I'm Ariel Ranker, and this is Real Lehigh News, your most trustworthy source for up-to-the-minute coverage of the happenings, politics, and scandals of Lehigh University. We begin with an update from the Lehigh Presidential Campaign Trail. A major blow was dealt to several candidates this week as a brown and white investigation revealed that over half the current candidates were involved in a massive scheme to launder dining dollars by purchasing large quantities of bananas at Upper Court and reselling them to primate keepers at the Lehigh Valley Zoo. The impact that this scandal could have on the fragile Lehigh microeconomy is massive. While the exchange rate between gold plus and US dollars has maintained a steady rate for years, the value of dining dollars has plummeted from nearly an eighth of a US dollar to only five cents on the dollar as of today. Five candidates found themselves wrapped up in the scandal and have since dropped out of the race. Squirrel Union organizer Twilliam S. Whiskers, the enormous tree on the UC front lawn, an escalator, Jesse Wilford Reno, the inventor of the escalator, and Jojo Siwa. With this major upset, only four candidates now remain in play. Tony from The Goose, Professor William Best, the ghost of Asa Packer, the last living lanternfly, and the creature from Hell who recently emerged from the Hell portal in Christmas Sawkins' basement. Be sure to check in next episode for more updates from the campaign trail. Also, don't forget to fill out this week's Real Lehigh News poll about the election at the link right here to let us know who your favorite candidates are. Up-and-coming satirical newsletter The Lehigh Lookaway drew public outcry last week after a controversial joke in their most recent email. The joke, from a parody news story about the brown and white, stated, quote, It looks like these recently laid-off brown and white journalists will have to find a home at an organization more up their alley. Like real Lehigh news. This joke, obviously at the expense of us here at Real Lehigh News, drew condemnation from every corner of the Lehigh community. In a press conference last Tuesday, President Simon himself went on the record to say, quote, The Lehigh Lookaway is an absolute sham. It is a travesty of a comedic newsletter. The unholy bastard child of The Onion and the rotting corpse of Mad Magazine. I beg of you all, unsubscribe from them immediately. Despite repeated requests for comment from Real Lehigh News, The Lookaway has remained silent on this matter. Not that we're surprised. After all, they are a mere satire outlet. What would they know about a respected bastion of journalism like Real Lehigh News? Vice President for Student Affairs Ricardo Hall was led away from his Williams Hall office in handcuffs last Friday following a successful FBI sting operation. The FBI told reporters that Hall was leveraging his position to run a black market Pez cartel, even going so far as to offer up Lehigh After Dark funds as collateral for risky trades. The large collection of Pez dispensers Vice President Hall houses in his office has been infamous on Lehigh's campus for years, but no one ever suspected that there was more to it than met the eye. According to court documents filed by federal prosecutors, Hall has been indicted on charges of fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, tax evasion, and multiple violations of U.S. customs laws. In an official statement, President Simon called Hall's arrest deeply concerning and promised that the university would fully cooperate with the ongoing investigation. We will update this story as it continues to develop. I would now like to update our loyal and valued viewers on the aggressive letter writing campaign that Lehigh's PR office has recently launched against us. We received a second angry email, which I have right here. Dear MHTV production team, we were disappointed to find that our previous communications failed to result in any type of agreement. Because nobody in our office has anything better to do, we have elected to give MHTV one more chance to revise its content before we are forced to take further action. Student organizations are expected to represent the university in a positive light regardless of so-called fact or accuracy. We hope that you will keep these suggestions in mind as you strive to create a more beneficial viewing experience for all 30 of your YouTube subscribers. Sincerely, Lehigh Public Relations Department. I would like to assure you all that we here at MHTV have our very best people on the job of acquiring a paper shredder for any future letters. If any of our 30 subscribers happen to have one, please let us know. Come on. 30 subscribers? Who do they think we are? Professor Gunter? I mean, we have more subscribers than that. We have at least, um... 38. Oh. We have 38 subscribers. 
Anyway, we highly value all several of the people who watch our content, and we have no intention of lying to you. It just happens. That's all the news on Fit to Print. I'm Ariel Ranker. Amazon shipped us damaged lighting, and this has been Real Lehigh News. Remember your first few steps on campus, walking up University Drive, seeing the beautiful architecture of the buildings, and then looking directly to your right and seeing this, and thinking, what the fuck? Yes, amidst the timeless architectural brilliance of Lehigh's main campus is this thing. Perhaps it's an interpretation of a single-person jail used as an artistic critique on the American prison system. Or maybe it's just a giant neon orange butt plug. It's best known for providing entertainment for the students who set up hammocks nearby so they can watch confused tourists stare at it and question why they even apply to this school. Well, don't get too caught up in your existential dread, because if you walk down the block, you can find this masterpiece to calm your nerves. A blind, chunky, tiny human packing an absolute dump truck of an ass. This ambiguously gendered piece of art prefers Z Zen pronouns and is sometimes referred to as a more humanistic approach to Big Chungus. If you've ever come out of Lewis Lab after failing your third physics exam in a row, you'd get to stroll down Memorial Drive East and see this liberal arts motherfucker reading James Harriet for the 10 millionth hour in a row. You'd think he'd get tired of that book, but looking at his overworn khakis and desperate need for a haircut, he's clearly pursuing a business degree and actually never learned how to read. The only inaccuracy is the fact that he's sporting some Saab car keys in a Jansport. The typical Lehigh business major prefers Daddy's Jeep and one of those overpriced Swedish backpacks that are too small to hold anything. Now, if only he would stop talking to his imaginary friends and maybe give the creepy ghost girl across the street some attention. There's nothing that screams more Lehigh than the iconic ripoff of Philly's love sign. University officials collaborated with the psychology department to study the psychological effects of putting the giant word love in Farrington. The vice president for finance even exclaimed, maybe if they read the word love enough, they'll embrace its meaning and stop complaining about how we raise tuition every year. However, the sign has had reverse effects to what upper admin expected, as with the exponentially increasing levels of depression on campus, most students who walk by the love sign just start crying uncontrollably and singing the 2000s hit song, Where is the Love? Ghost Girl is also feeling this drought of love, as she continues to get ignored by the cocky book boy. If you've ever walked down Memorial Drive East at night, you've at least come close to shitting your pants after seeing this Mod Podge ghost lady out of the corner of your eye. Her unrequited love is felt by most, as most people fear coming within a six foot radius of this lady in the hopes that we don't get an evil curse placed on us. This lady redefines social distancing to a whole new level. Now for this piece of art, it looks like the construction workers building the new College of Health down the street accidentally left some of their materials outside FML, and eventually just said, ah, fuck it, we'll leave them there and call it art. These vertical slabs of concrete that look like circular kitchen countertops feature random holes of various sizes. Now as art analyzers, it's our job to think, what do these holes really mean? What is the artist trying to say? My initial guess is that, judging by the fact that it's placed outside FML, the holes represent the void within engineering students' souls that develops after spending upwards of 40 hours a week in this building. Turns out, the Frisbee team recruited some Kai Fi kids to punch holes through them to make a sick Frisbee obstacle course. Nice job, boys. If you thought the kitchen countertops were not creative, check out this hunk of metal. The construction workers straight up played Jenga with the infrastructure of the new College of Health, and yet another piece in bright neon orange. Was the butt plug not enough? It's definitely not a sight for sore eyes, but rather a sore sight for the eyes. And that's it for the video. Just kidding, you thought I'd leave out the three-headed chicken? It's the only real piece of art on campus. I mean, look at the artistry, the lines, the hours of work poured into this feathery demonic bird. Most students choose to come to this campus because it looks like Hogwarts, while this piece of art just hammers that idea straight home. There's nothing like sipping on a glass of butterbeer, or if you're broke a truly, next to the three-headed chicken. Now this is the epitome of art. Hello Lehigh, I'm Ben Metz, and on today's episode of Metz Meets, I'm meeting with LU Swap Shops, Sophia Mayon and Maria Lira. Swap Shop allows students to swap clothing for free in an effort to reduce the over 13 million tons of clothing waste that ends up in landfills every year. And to put that in perspective, that is enough clothing to weigh almost as much as my yearly intake of suits, specifically corduroy. 
Anyways, welcome to the show, guys. So what is the Swap Shop and where is it located? So it's at uh, 516 Broadhead Ave, which is where the sustainability office is. It's on the second floor. Basically, it's just sort of like a free thrift store on campus. You can drop stuff off and you can pick stuff up. There's no you know, financial aspect of it. So we kind of started it as you like highlighted trash or clothing waste is like a really huge issue. Um, so that's initially why we started it. And then we also kind of realized the advantages that we'd be able to provide to students um, of different socioeconomic backgrounds specifically around like career fairs or if they need like a nice shirt and don't really have the like resources to go out and buy it. Um, the fact that we'd be able to have that infrastructure on campus for free is pretty cool. How else does it differ from your average thrift store? I mean, I think just the fact that everything's free and it's also like encouraging swapping. Um, that's why it's called the swap shop. Like students are encouraged to bring something in and then take whatever they need. What kind of clothes are usually found there? We have everything from like sports bras and workout shorts to formal dresses to corduroy pants. Um, wow. I'll be stopping and... by later. <laughs> yeah, so it's really, it's a pretty wide range. We do also have a lot of jackets and we are trying to like increase how many jackets we have. Again, for students who like come from hotter climates that may not be able to like drop 200 bucks for a down jacket. How has COVID altered the functionality of Swap Shop? So we've gone completely remote. We didn't have an Instagram before and we have one now. Um, Swap Shop's Instagram is popping off recently. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hey guys, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm Mr. Metz's assistant. Peasant? Welcome. What are you doing Hi. here? I'm in the middle of an interview. Um, my apologies, Mr. Metz, but um, you got another delivery for uh, seven more corduroy suits. Do you want Do you want me to sign for you? Fine, just put them in the corduroy room. Of course, Mr. Metz. Um, sh should I place them on the corduroy couch or next to the corduroy suit? <laughs> display, please? Couch is fine. You got it, boss. Well, sorry to interrupt again. Uh, enjoy the interview, everyone. Thanks. Hey. How does your social media presence affect the exposure? Definitely positively. I mean, I like never thought we would be like edging towards like 500 followers. Like that's crazy for me. Wow. <laughs> What's your view on dumpster diving for cool stuff? I mean, if it's not a gross dumpster. What do you guys think that the swap shop would give me for this? <laughs> Um, I really like that. Wow. Um, I think that they would give you, if it wasn't COVID, just a free hour to go in and take whatever you wanted. How about this? Maybe a left that. shoe. Can a visitor swap their soul for a deal with the devil? As an official associate of the swap shop, I'm going to have to say no to that. Uh, we're a non-denominational organization. However, as an individual, I would say, yes, that type of sacrifice could absolutely occur um, in certain spaces across campus. And that is all the questions that we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us on this interview. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew McLean, and as a longtime resident of the Southside Commons community, I am delighted to give you this comprehensive guided tour. Follow me! So this is the lobby, the lounge, the sitting area, if you will. Like a week ago, a frat boy got drunk and passed out on the couch and peed himself, so no one sits on it anymore, but it's a great accent piece. Fun fact, the iconic and controversial yellow highlights on the Southside Commons apartment building was actually chosen to match this fire hydrant. The building's address was actually originally supposed to be 666 Broadhead Avenue. Um, it was changed for obvious reasons. And over here we have Southside's state-of-the-art waste management system. It's great, this is our favorite part of the building. I've made some of my best friends here. Something not everyone knows about Southside Commons is that actually it was originally built with the express purpose of blocking out the sun on the entire block of Burkle. I'm pretty sure property values have been halved on that side, but you know, that's gentrification, baby. The very first thing you see when you walk into the building from this entrance is uh, a massive doormat with the Grey Star logo on it, just so you don't forget about our corporate overlords, praise be upon them. Down the hall here in a tasteful ode to George Orwell's classic 1984, we have a giant TV screen, which is on all the time and plays social media posts from two years ago. Uh, 
probably the most concerning thing is the exit signs. So you look at this and you think it says exit, so it should be in reverse on the other side, right? But then you walk to the other side and it still says exit. I mean, this is witchcraft, right? We don't talk about this thing. This is the fitness center. It's honestly pretty nice um, when it's open, which is like 50-50 because, you know, global pandemic and all. All right, welcome to where the magic happens. Uh, this is one of our many lounges. This is the fourth floor lounge. You got tables for working at. You got other tables for lounging at. You got gorgeous view of Brogel Middle School, uh, home of the meanest middle schoolers in the entire world. They have bullied me before and they will bully you too someday. Here we have Southside's most prized possession. Uh, this is the world's smallest art gallery. It's pretty neat. So the great thing about Southside's hallways is that the organization and the look of them really says luxurious. And the complete and utter lack of decoration on the walls says mental institution. This one is backwards. Why is this one backwards? I'm pretty sure I have a shirt that looks just like this. Southside Commons is also home to the world's loudest washing machines. Do your laundry right after you wake up, because then you are never going to be able to go back to sleep. Last but not least, Southside Commons is a pet-friendly apartment complex. Southside Commons is the best place in town for you and your furry friend. So come on down to the leasing office to learn more. You love it here, don't you, Chickpea? <laughs> Thanks for watching. This week's featured comment is nothing, by no one, because no one ever comments anything except emojis. Please comment on this episode.